Hello everyone and welcome to my lecture on opiates. My name is Eileen Wallow and this is for my Psychology 366, Drugs, Mind, and Behavior course with USM. What are opiates? Opiates are a drug that atta attaches to the opioid receptor proteins. With this, with them attaching to opioid receptor proteins means they are on the nerve cells in the brain, the spinal cord, and other parts of the body. And when they do this, they, blo they block um, pain messages from being sent around the body. Um, and so with this, um, opioids are, there are natural opioids, which means they stem from uh, like opium poppy plant. So like the red flowers you see um, with the little black spots in it typically related to um, like the fields of poppies in Europe. Um, we have poppies that grow here as well and that's where they come from. And then they're synthetic, which means they have a similar chemical structure as the natural opioids and can thus produce the similar effects that the natural would do. And then alternatively, nar um, opioids are also called narcotics as a nickname. Um, now when it comes to opioids, they are safe when they're under a physician supervision in the short term. When it comes to long term, there's a lot more risks involved and a lot more danger for the patient um, in their whole well being. And we'll get onto that with the next slide. Risks. Um, often, when they are prescribed, they're to treat chronic and acute pain. So, in instances like you freshly break a bone um, and it's a severe break, sometimes physicians will prescribe you an opiate to take as needed. Um, with the pain. So sometimes the pain will be excruciating, so as needed, you'll take the opiate. But when the pain doesn't feel as bad, you can take something as simple as Tylenol, and the Tylenol will help. Um, that's following it as the doctor directed. Um, just because the pain is minor does not necessarily mean it requires the opiate. Um, you know, things like that, as well as um, post surgery. And they've actually found that those post-surgery do better um, in terms of not necessarily having a tolerance, dependence, or addiction to opiates as for other simple medical conditions requiring it. Um, and along with that, um, they can cause a relief of ailment. So they'll relieve the pain, um, whether temporarily or long-term depending on the half-life of the opiate for the person specifically, and uh, as well as it can cause euphoria, slowed breathing, nausea, and drowsiness. Um, where there's risks with this is euphoria is sometimes people like the um, feeling of the euphoria. So then they will continue to take the drug in order to more, especially when they have psychological um, health problems, they'll use the opiate to treat that more so than the pain. And then because they like the euphoria and it can just overall turn them into, I need this in order to treat multiple things at once, which is what, that is not what opioids really are necessarily should be used for. That's misuse. Um, it can cause slowed breathing like you see with um, overdoses and with the slowed breathing we see hypoxia which is a result of um, not enough oxygen reaching the brain. Um, so it's like you'll notice really slow deep breaths you're not bringing in enough oxygen that's needed for the to circulate through your blood and reach your brain and give you what you need. Um, this can cause uh, 
long-term and short-term um, effects to the body, both mentally as well as uh, physically by neurological reasons. Um, this is especially the slowed breathing, like I said previously, in overdose. Uh, it can create brain damage, death, and sometimes um, comas. And it can cause nausea. So like when you're, you get that nauseous feeling like, oh, I'm gonna throw up, or I don't feel good, and I almost feel like you're gonna gag type of feeling, it can cause that. And drowsiness, as you know, is like sleepiness. Now, um, with this, it's important to note the difference between tolerance, dependence, and addiction. Tolerance is when your body gets used to the drug in your system, and it requires you need more of the drug in order for it to continue to have the effect originally had in your body. Um, when it comes to dependence, that occurs with repeated use in the neurons, and um, the neurons adapt so that way they feel like the only way they can function is with the opioids in the system. So then if you take the opioids away, they can't, they feel like they cannot function, it'll cause a lot of problems uh, health-wise. Uh, when it comes to addiction, it's, it, it is a disease. It's very much been noted that it is a hereditary type of thing. It also depends on your mental health and your diagnoses. Um, you know, it comes to a point where you become very, doing very harmful decision making. You're not thinking things through. You're being compulsive. Um, you do, you seek out the drugs and you doctor shop, which means you sometimes will see different doctors for them all to prescribe you opiates. And sometimes they found in some states that the systems are not being updated as regularly as they should to be able to recognize and note when people are drug seeking, um, which otherwise it typically is a system that can be used to track that. Um, as well as when it comes to those who are older and like the elderly, um, typically when you reach to an older age, you have a tendency to have a bunch more diseases and medicines you have to take to treat those. And when it comes to opioids, you're at risk of the opioid and any other medications you're on mixing and causing um, different side effects and them not interacting well within the body. Um, that can cause problems for these individuals, as well as the, say the opioids do not react well with some people's conditions. Um, you know, and plus when, as you get older, your metabolism get slower. So when you have a slow metabolism, that means the drug breakdown will also be slower. So the meds can be within your system for a longer amount of time. Um, and I want to touch back with the uh, addiction and dependence and tolerance. Um, heroin is very similar to opioids in the sense that they are of a similar structure. They're not quite the same. They both produce highs. And when it comes to opioids, they are actually worldwide, the United States consumes 80% of opioids worldwide. And so they are not necessarily easy to come by because physicians have to be specifically trained to, in order to be able to prescribe them. Um, as well as different clinics. And so the accessibility is not necessarily there and the expense because of going to pharmacies and things like that, it's, it's expensive. And op prescription opioids are the most abused um, drugs uh, globally. And so when it comes to heroin, it's not that very difficult for people to make that decision to switch to heroin because the Accessibility is much easier. Uh, the price is cheaper. And um, as a whole, that becomes very dangerous um, because there's risks of HIV and AIDS and hepatitis due to 
um, reused noodle needles, um, taking them on the street, uh, not knowing if different things are mixed into the heroin because you decide you make that switch, um, infections and things like that, especially if it's being taken intravenously. Um, opioids can be as well. Um, they're typically taken uh, in pill format. Uh, they can be taken where people can crush them up and snort them. Um, you can, they also will mix them with water and inject them or they will um, melt them down like you see in like spoons and things like that and inject them intravenously. Um, or they will chew them in their mouth so they kind of dissolve quicker within the body. Um, there's a bunch of different ways and things that they do in order to get that high. Um, it's very risky and like I said with the needles and things like that and taking them on the street, it's very risky for people addicted to opioids themselves to also be at risk for HIV and hepatitis. Um, yeah, and then treatment for uh, buprenorphine is a drug very similar to methadone. Um, when it tr comes to treating uh, opiate addiction and opioid addiction, it is much safer in the sense of in, in the induction phase of treatment. Um, compared to the methadone. And uh, it tends to be more expensive though than methadone. And, um, but methadone and buprenorphine are both used in order to treat addiction. And buprenorphine is often treated with, um, I believe, um, Is, and then methadone is more, like I stated, more expensive. There's methadone clinics um, everywhere, not everywhere, but like most places in order to get treatment. Um, and they both start off with basic low doses and they go on for a matter of a couple of days, slowly increasing the amount of methadone and buprenorphine in order to wean the person from their drugs that they've been taking. Um, urine tests are taken regularly throughout to track progress. Um, and through numerous studies, they've, it's been stated that combination treatment, so the methadone and buprenorphine, although both successful in their own treatment plans, is that in order to prevent relapse, the, taking the medications, the support groups, and doing individual counseling all together are very beneficial in the prevention of a relapse for the individual. And when it comes to treatment, that itself is very risky because individuals when they complete treatment are most at risk for relapse and overdosing and dying because they've become clean, they don't necessarily have the drugs that they were initially using in their system anymore. And then because they've been weaned off of those drugs, they will think they can take the same amount they were taking prior to treatment, which due to a dependence and tolerance can make it so they overdose and they can die. And um, every day more than 90 people die of overdose in the United States. And it's a very scary thing, but it's very, very real. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, in, within the U.S. alone, two million Americans misuse opioids, and which lead to different, which can lead to the addiction, and, um, with all of these, um, as a whole, it's very risky, and like I said, lead to death, HIV, hepatitis, and yeah.
in it as well. Um, they found as well as with the treatments of the oral tap, either like the oral tablets or um, as like a film that's put on the inside of the cheek or like under the tongue with when it comes to methadone and buprenorphine is they've also discovered in a study that there's subdermal uh, buprenorphine implants which can help treat long t longer term for the individuals going through um, getting sober. And thus, um, it's based off of the study from Itzo and Guarneri, it very much presents to me very similarly as we see like the um, insulin pumps where um, you track your blood sugar as you should, but the pump automatically gives you the amount of insulin you need throughout the day or the week when necessary. And this can be very beneficial in the sense where the people are still being monitored, but they don't necessarily have to go into the clinics necessarily daily. And it appears to be a very um, positive uh, improvement in the treatment of opioid addiction and um, dependence.